Christ. Uh, it's not that bad, is it? Huh? Yeah, because if I go there, then you can't, then you're going to have to go there. No, I can go here. Oh, shit. I win. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I win. I remember my question now. Shoot. What was your first impression of me? Like, first, first, like, say at our first table read. Hmm. Good posture, confident walk. Interesting. What about me? You'd say a little stiff, monotone, <laughs> but a confident, calm hmm. presence. Hmm. I could tell you'd be a good director. Not uh, dashingly handsome. Well, I may have thought you were handsome, mm. but my obnoxious crush on you didn't begin until we started working on Harry's script together. Mm. You know, revising a love story, looking into each other's eyes, eating food. <laughs> Funny. I wonder what the Atlanta film scene girls will notice about you. The dashing new northerner. I know you'll be busy, but be sure to keep an eye out if you know what I mean. I don't, I don't want to think about that right now. I'm serious. You don't always know your own appeal, and it's not a bad way to get some community when you're new. Things could have gone much differently if I hadn't gone to New Orleans. I don't think so. I think maybe a little. Love, the stars show a serious shift this month. Tell me, what has shifted in your world? I know what's shifted in my world. Babe, not now. This woman has serious shit in her stars. I'm sorry, love. What cosmic shift has occurred in the past month? Um, well, coming to terms with OCD, <laughs> uh, I finally got diagnosed. Um, two weeks ago. I actually self-diagnosed about a year ago, but multiple professionals thought it was just anxiety. So, yeah. But it's been nice to be here with my family and shift my focus. What brings you to New Orleans? We are on a bit of a pilgrimage to the bench where my dad asked my mom to marry him. <laughs> she didn't say yes right there, though. She made him wait the whole riverboat ride while she processed. My God. Yeah. It was not a very romantic boat ride. But... Since then, it's been pretty happily ever after. Every waiter and shop owner in New Orleans knows the story my dad has been telling everyone. <laughs> yes. And your love life. We see someone tall. Brown eyes. Maybe more of a hazel. You said brown eyes. Hazel's technically brown. Brown eyes. Brown hair. Anybody? <laughs> no. Um. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if he's in the category of love life. More of an unrequited, agony-inducing love type thing. But <laughs> yeah. Um. That ship has firmly sailed. Funny story, actually, I'm going to have to fire him from the film we're on. Darling, I you know, for a year now, I've hinted like nobody's business. My God, you should have seen me. I, I've never been more obvious. <laughs> He's got to know that I have feelings for him. He's got to. It's, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Hints, obvious. I think. No, I, I, I know. He doesn't know. 
You have to tell him. And tell him soon. So how is New Orleans? Good. Um, that picture says be benched. They, like it's a million of beignets. So any big plans for this week? Maybe like Jason, perhaps? <laughs> no. No. Speak of the devil, I actually have to fire him from Harry's project today. Oh god, that's right. Good luck with that. It's all good, just cautious styles. No one's really to blame. Remember when I fired you? Yeah, time of my life. Honestly, I was kind of looking forward to it. Hey. Not that having to kick you off the project part, but having an excuse to spend time with you huh. alone. Yeah, well, I should, uh, I should probably get back to editing, but thank you for taking the time to meet with me. Of course, it's the least I can do. I was the one to bring you on the project in the first place. Well, it is what it is. Uh, but I'm glad that it was you to deliver the news. You're good at seeing both sides of situations like this. Well, um, I guess I won't be seeing you around much anymore. Guess not. Well, if I don't see you before I graduate, um, it's been great working with you. Thank you for all your work on my thesis film, and I wish you the best of luck. How the hell did we get to that handshake part? You don't remember the importance of a firm handshake? <laughs> it's a good handshake you have. Never underestimate the importance of a firm handshake and good eye contact. Thanks. Well, see ya. See you around. Can I just ask you one question? Sure. I honestly just have to ask out of curiosity. You must have known I had a crush on you. No. Oh. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there it is. And then you got wiser? Maybe? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I sensed how you felt about mixing work and play, and, and I knew this was a really important year for you, portfolio-wise. And to be honest, I also thought that maybe you thought that four years was too big of an age difference, or, or, or that you were gay, or just not into me. Hmm. Well, I think you're kind of cool, too. Maybe we can hang out outside of film sometime. Oh, well, well I, I didn't mean that as an offer. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, no, don't be sorry. <laughs> no, I, I just thought that the, what you were saying, no, I meant please, to... Please, please, don't be sorry. That'd be nice. Okay. But uh, I am graduating in five weeks, so I'm not really looking for a relationship. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Neither am I. 
Well, I suppose we both have each other's numbers. That we do. Text Mooney at home safe. Okay. So it seems like we're not completely written out of each other's lives. Agreed, for sure. Maybe we'll make a movie together someday or get together if our spouses <laughs> die. <laughs> yes and yes. But I mean, if we were working on something together, we couldn't also be involved. What? I don't want any drama on set. Are you shitting me? No. <laughs> when have I ever been dramatic? <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not that. I just, I, I think it would be hypocritical of me if the cast and crew started to get together. I couldn't ask them not to. It's my policy. I'm not even gonna argue this time. <laughs> Two years and you'd still put me in the category of an onset fling. Can I get you guys anything else over here? <sighs> no, we're, we're great, thank you. Okay. This is good, actually, that, that this came up, that our difference in priorities came up. <laughs> I keep trying to remind myself of stuff like that. Like that brunch in Providence, remember? You didn't want to go, you were talking about traffic, how you thought it'd be logical to get an earlier start. That was one of the only times that you jumped into my life instead of me blending into yours. <laughs> and you didn't like it. So in sum, I think my lifestyle would drive you crazy and I'd become lonely in yours. That's too bad. You have cute kids. <laughs> Can we have a recap on what we're deciding here? Yeah. So since you're leaving this week, we thought we thought that it would be logical to to take this as an opportunity to transition. Yeah. But we're not setting rules for the future. We can we can still talk and have sex when contextually appropriate. For example, when we're not working together. Um, but we're trying to take a step towards seeing other people. Right. I'm having a thought. Well, that's unlike you. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of us for how we're handling this, but you gotta admit it's it's a bit comical. You think? Imagine a rom com. It could have the the meet cute, the tension, the the build up, all that crowd pleasing standard stuff. That, and it could even have a happily ever after. Mm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the characters have to be together at the end. What if it was meant to be, like totally meant to be for, for the time that it was? And at the end of the movie, it leaves off where the characters are, are in a better place and ready to start their new chapters. Hmm? hmm? Sounds interesting. <laughs> the girl character, for hmm. example, could be coming to terms with the diagnosis when the relationship begins. He maybe is a, a stable, loving figure. Exactly what she needs for that time in her life. It's familiar. Might be slightly based off of someone I know. 
So can we talk about the guy character? Was it meant to be for him? For the time that it was? You could say that. But can he say that? He could, um, but he's getting tired. Can he voice just one reason that he's happy he spent the last two years with her? Anything? Anything at all. It doesn't even have to be a good thing. What? What is it? Are you upset? Did my story idea upset you? No. No, Sabrina, it's... I don't think we need to wrap up two years in a nice bow like that. I... Okay, I... I just... I thought that the idea was kind of symbolic. I... I just know that there are things that I'll carry with me regardless of if or, or when you're in my life. I just thought... Sabrina, you gotta know by now that just because I don't express things in the same way that you do, it, it doesn't mean that I... I... I know. I do. I do. I still get nervous every time. You help me verbalize? It's not a bad idea. And I think the guy in your story has some potential. <laughs> what should we call him? Bob. <laughs> Classic. And the girl? Juliet. Bob and Juliet. <laughs> All right. When Juliet meets Bob, he is on a one-track path to success. He doesn't think there's any time for relationships until he makes it professionally. And I hope that Juliet taught him that he doesn't have to choose between a significant other and a career. He can have both. And he's lovable. <laughs> People will wanna have him in their lives. So I hope that going forward, he lets them. <laughs> Bob and Juliet could have the love, I mean, sorry, the L word discrepancy. I still think you love me. I'm gonna choose to believe that. <laughs> and if you ever did choose to use that word with me, I. I wouldn't think of it as like a will you marry me or, or, or some type of long-term proposal or something like that. Really, I think that most people say I love you to describe a feeling that they're feeling right in that moment. And I mean, I know that I can say that I will always love you. All that said, don't worry. I know you're fond of me. Very fond of you. You're one of a kind, Jason Blue. Well, Bob might be one of a kind, but Juliet is as good as they come. Truly. Um, and she helps him at a really important time, you know, transitioning to adult life. It's all what you said about, you know, letting life be a little messier than he's used to. <laughs> he was looking through photos from this year. And there were so many where he was smiling and genuinely happy. It was a long year, but it was much brighter you were in it. <sighs> wow. It's <laughs> a lot of words.
I was reading this Italian philosophy once that said that when you break up with someone, they, they enter into almost like a familial type role in your life. Like maybe they're your aunt who you don't have to speak to all the time, but who's a part of your life, your past, and who you'd be there for. I like that. Time to go home? <laughs>